Okay, welcome back to members of uh, 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and to our ongoing seminar in Christian philosophy. We are looking at Hegel's masterpiece, The Phenomenology of Spirit. We're going to take a look at uh, pages 290 to 302, paragraphs 477 to 495, and we're going to take a look at uh, art, art and culture today. We are beginning the final triad of Hegel's phenomenology. In previous lessons we've discussed this, but how does the spirit become concrete for Hegel? The spirit becomes concrete as art, religion, and philosophy. In this lesson, and art and culture are synonymous, in this lesson, we're going to discuss art or culture. The next lesson will be religion. And then the final lesson will be absolute knowing or philosophy. So we're into the final triad of the phenomenology. This is, uh, if you've been hanging in there thus far, congratulations, because this is a difficult study and for you to uh, endure and persist is commendable. So we're going to be at beginning the final triad of the phenomenology today with the uh, spirit becoming concrete in culture or you could say the spirit becoming concrete in art. Let's go to block one and we'll get started. A fallen nature lacks the spirit of life, three aspects. A soulless university, the unity of individuality and ethical substance withdraws into a soulless-like existence. Spirit is manifest as an inequality between selves, and the self withdraws into a false certainty where egoism uh, counts as one's own self. Fallen nature as a negative universality. The unity between individuality and substance is simple, unitary nature. Spirit is merely the eye of self-consciousness, it has not transitioned to the we. The self is taken up into a necessity of blank destiny. Into a necessity of a, just a blank, empty destiny. And finally, fallen nature as the principle of legal status as universality. Legalism, that's as good as it gets. The self is a rigid, unyielding self. Unity of individuality has actually stepped out of unity with ethical substance, and spirit is reduced to legalism. There's no real life of spirit. That is the fallen nature for Hegel. That is fallen nature of humanity. As good as we get is uh, obey the rules. There's no living in the spirit. There's no trying to uh, uh, participate in a realm of uh, dynamic ethical substance. No. The easy path is uh, what are the rules I need to obey and that's as good as I'll get. Just give me the rules. I will obey the rules. I don't have to become an ethical person. I don't have to have an ethical nature. Obey the rules. Participate in a strict legalism. And uh, you're accepted. So for Hegel, that is the fallen nature. It's the fallen nature of the self of legalism. Now, block two, we're going to look at the fallen culture, because if that's fallen nature, 
Then what about our culture? Our, cult, our culture is obviously a fallen culture, and today we definitely live within a fallen culture. The uh, cult of the woke agenda, it, it defines our current fallen culture. And Hegel said that is a self-alienated realm of spirit. Block two, essence becomes the mere being of custom. Essence is determinate mere being in the form of spiritual custom. It's an unyielding culture reality, very unyielding. Tradition and culture are what matter, and uh, there's no uh, dynamic ethical realm whatsoever. Custom as unyielding external given. It becomes the purely external world of the self. It is a negative of the self. This given, Hegel says, must be infused with true being by genuine spiritual self-consciousness. It is lacking and the fallen culture must be infused with true being by a participating genuine self-consciousness. Fallen culture of mere custom must be infused with spirit. Block 2, note 3. External reality exists as custom and legalism. It's a negative fallen reality. And it results in alienation. The self feels alienated. It cannot identify with such a culture. The self is caught up in a, an environment of negative raging elements, says Hegel. The self is caught up in a cultural environment of negative raging elements. This given externality must be transcended, must be infused with spirit. The self recognizes that there is an objective real world also. There is a, another side to existence. There is a spiritual realm of the self-positing spirit behind this false current fallen culture. And this is the self-conscious, self-consciousness being aware of this pure universal that does exist and needs to be participated in, needs to be appropriated, and then needs to be infused in the current fallen culture. The self recognizes an incarnate spiritual beyond of an of eschatological influence. In other words, the realm of spirit that we recognize through spiritual perception draws us forward. It doesn't draw us into a false utopia. It draws us forward into a the living uh, as an eschatological self. We are to live our life as an eschatological self we are to participate in the realm of spirit. We are to infuse the current fallen culture with spirit. We're, we are to infuse our culture with spirit. That is the obligation of a genuine believer. We are to infuse our current fallen culture with spirit through the work of our self-consciousness. We are aware that there is a realm of spirit behind our current fallen culture. So block one, Hegel says, humanity possesses a fallen nature, primarily legalism. 
block two, Hegel tells us culture is also fallen as tradition and custom. There's no uh, new interpenetration of the realm of spirit. It's fallen to a false custom, a false tradition, and in our culture today, that is the false custom of the cult of the woke agenda. It has perverted and distorted and destroyed our culture. Our culture currently exists as a fallen culture of a false custom and a false tradition. And it cannot be transcended unless it becomes infused with spirit and infusion of spirit comes through self-conscious selves who believe and who practice noesis spiritual perception. Let's move on to block three and take a look at uh, a very good conclusion because it's the first part of our triad uh, for making spirit concrete. How do we establish a concrete culture within the realm of positing? Culture and positing. Spiritual essence in the world is permeated by the self-conscious self. The self-consciousness creates the spiritual world by negating our own natural being and then taking up the act of positing the truth. And that is the act of positing that does go forth. In this way, the self takes possession of the world. The self takes possession by participating in the realm of positing, which for Hegel is the realm of spirit. In order to actualize true culture. Okay, block three, note two, culture and possession. First, self-consciousness renunciates the natural being of the self. Then the self can commit the act of positing the universal truth. We are positing a Christian world view, an ontological universal truth sign model. Because we want to create a culture of universality within actual externality. We want to create a culture of universality within actual existence. That takes us to a 3-3 three, three and the procedure, which is a triad, of course, for Hegel. Culture and the procedure of the triad of culture. And it consists of the act of positing, which passes through negation of our natural personality, then positing a universality to be actualized in externality. Through culture, the individual acquires actuality. The self becomes spirit through being alienated from natural being and actualization takes place through positing and it is the very purpose of the self. Our purpose is to construct a biblical worldview. Our purpose is to construct a biblical Christian ontology. Then our purpose is to posit that ontological sign model that represents what? 
the ontological trinity. We present that and share that in the world in an effort to reach recognition in others. In other words, to reach concrete actualization of a Christian culture. Our goal is to create a universal Christian culture. And to do so, it means that we want to uh, engage in the procedure of a triad of creating culture. And for Hegel, that means positing. We are to take up the act of positing, but we first must move through negation and negate the uh, natural secular personality of the self in order to preserve the universal side of the self, then we're ready to posit a culture of universality actualized in the external world. And through the act of culture, the self does acquire actual, concrete existence. We actually create concrete spirit. That's the best way to say it. The self creates concrete spirit by positing, by forming and formulating a Christian worldview and positing that worldview in the hope of reaching recognition in other selves. Our goal is to reach recognition of the true within our culture of other self-conscious selves. When we do that, then we transcend fallen nature of the self. Then we transcend the current fallen culture then we establish a Christian culture in the realm of positing. Remember, for Hegel, the realm of spirit is the realm of positing. The realm of positing is the realm of the rational, and it is the realm of genuine spirit of the Lagos, spirit of the eternal Lagos. This got us started on Hegel's final triad of how does spirit become concrete? Spirit becomes, spirit becomes concrete as art, religion, and philosophy. This lesson, we looked at spirit becoming concrete as art within culture. Next lesson, spirit becomes concrete through religion, pages 410 to 421, paragraphs 672 to 691. Next lesson, religion, paragraphs 672 to 691. Next lesson, religion. We've just concluded the first part of the triad, art or culture. That wraps up paragraphs 477 to 495.